Oh my goodness. This is like a dream come true for me. I just have to tell you. City Lou, I think we met back in 2000, the first time I attended Unity North. And she blew me away back then. And um, one of my favorite songs back then actually was Heme Aki, Here I Am, Lord. And it really is, yeah, let's lay it down, let's surrender, let's learn to be authentic. So thank you for being here today. When Asha told me that she wasn't going to be here, I was like, hi, I'm so sorry you won't be here. And then she said, Cindy Boo was coming out. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway, I love Asha. I love Asha. I'm being honest. I'm being brave. Just be, just be out what's in my heart this morning, though. I love Asha dearly, and she is truly gifted and amazing. We all are gifted and amazing. And when Melanie was talking about the series that she's been teaching and sharing with all of you, it's been about identity. It's been about answering the question, who am I? It's been about, in lots of ways, what I got out of it and, and have been getting out of it is, how do I learn to be authentic? Who am I? Why am I here? What is it all about? And let me find where I just put my glasses and that will help me talk about what it's all about. So I wanted to integrate the, my talk today into this theme of stories, into this theme of identities. And I was listening to Melody's talk from last week. I was actually in Blairsville speaking at the Unity Church there last Sunday. But I wanted to listen to her talk so I could sort of weave in what my heart was led to share with you today and to continue this wonderful theme of rewriting our stories, of laying down the old ones, and knowing that all the things that happen to us in any time are truly those experiences that bring us to this moment right here and right now. And that there really is no accident. There never are any accidents. And one of the things that Melanie said too that I so appreciate is we do connect through our stories. We, we have so many of them. And as she shared, a lot of them propel us forward. A lot of them can keep us stuck. And what I kept getting from this was like, you know, Jeannie, perhaps you need to talk about authenticity. Perhaps that would be a great topic to underpin all of these stories and all of these experiences that we have. When she mentioned the book, Wayne Muller, How Then Shall I Live? I know I took Stephanie's classes, actually, when she taught that. Uh, and I was so touched by that because it was asking that question again. And we're always asked that question, I believe, from the moment we wake up first thing in the morning. And we have that awareness of here we are. Okay, well, where is here? Who am I? How am I going to create my day today? Do I want to do it differently? Am I still wearing some of the masks, perhaps, that I have put on me? that have, you know, maybe got me through some situations to where I could not let you see me, to where the fear, to where the anxiety, to where the paralysis sometimes kept me stuck. I love the song so much about be brave. Speak out those words. Let them fall out of you. And to do that honestly and openly. I think oftentimes what happens in our culture and in relationships, even the ones with ourself. What is the dialogue that we are even having with ourselves? Is it an authentic one? Or are we creating more stories as we engage the thoughts and the awarenesses that we have? So in those moments of asking ourselves, what would it take for me to be authentic? Maybe I'm authentic in certain situations and then not so much over here because it's a risky thing. I wanted to share this book with you. I'm pulling some of my material from this today, but not all of it. But it's a book by Brene Brown, if you have not heard of her. And it's called The Gifts of Imperfection. And she talks about vulnerability in here and many other things insofar of standing in your truth and letting your voice much like Cindy Lou's voice this morning, you know, sharing that expression of the divine. And for each of us to truly remind ourselves each moment 
is that opportunity to be the voice for love. So I wanted to take a look at it. You know, Oscar Wilde, he says, be yourself, everyone else is taken. And I'm sure some of you have heard that before, right? So why is it, and, and once again, in, in the culture, in our society, in the media, in the world out there, we'll see somebody on TV, or we'll, we'll capture something, or something will capture our attention, and I'll go, ooh, I want to look like that. I want to be like that person. And you know, it's one thing to appreciate what is happening with yourself in that moment, to perhaps the qualities that are being displayed to you in that moment. And to know that what is being reflected back to you is truly the essence of all that you are. And to ask yourself again in those moments, what is it that I'm being called to take a look at in this moment that allows me to truly be authentic? Just to be me. And to know that I am more than enough. I always have been. I always will be. It just is. When I told Melanie what the title of my talk was going to be, and I said authenticity, I like to say authentic city. So when you look at that word, you can spell it differently. I love to play with words. Can you imagine what it would be like if somebody asked you, where do you live? I live in authentic city. Wouldn't that be great? It could even be like on your driver's license or something. You know? And, and all your, your stuff would come to authentic city. What would that look like? Where you can just be you, where everybody knows your name, so to speak, and all the things around you in this environment would truly continue to support you and to uplift you in being open, in being honest, in being brave, and knowing that the words that flow from your mouth are coming from that place of the divine. So we have the opportunity to what? Walk a human journey, right? Spiritual beings walking and living in a human journey. Well, being authentic, who we? I don't know about all of you, but I bet we could have a lot of stories here today of each and every one of us talking about times when perhaps we backed away or we shrunk down and we did not allow our true authentic self to speak up to be seen, to be heard. And not from the place of ego, but from that place of truly the expression of love, the expression of the divine coming through. You being a channel, I love that word, just to be a channel, a conduit for that love. Who would be an authentic city with you? Who's your tribe? Who would be on your team that would encourage you, no matter what it was that you wanted to say? No matter what story you would be writing, that all the stuff that was shared in the reading by Corbin this morning from Rumi in the guest house, all the different things that would show up, would you be able to look at those, to embrace those, the shadow side, the stuff that gets ucky and yucky and mucky, would you be able to take a look at that and to know that all of it's okay and that every single one of those things are the things that are catapulting you to be this authentic <coughs> expression, this authentic expression of all that is. What's the big deal about being authentic anyway? Why would I even care to do that? Well, probably a lot of times it would be easier just to be quiet. Not say a word. Why does my opinion matter? Why do my thoughts count? Maybe that's a story that I've carried for a long time. I know back in high school, I was so scared to get up in front of anybody because I didn't feel like I had anything to offer. And that was with me for a very, very long time. I would not even read a book anymore. <coughs> Go figure. Here I am reading something, and it's not even about me. I'm just doing my homework. I would take an F in an English class before I would stand up in front of people and read a book report. I had so much shame, and I was so embarrassed to let people see me. 
That was my stuff. Who knows where it came from? I do believe, though, at times that we carry stuff from our history, from our ancestors. And there's an energy, a residue that we carry with us, an energetic signature, oftentimes, that follows us into many lifetimes. So as I've come to understand that, that has really helped me not blame my parents, honestly, and for me to take responsibility and be open to what are the things that have brought me to this place? What are the things that have held me back? And once again, not to do it from a place of blame, it's really from a place of what? Awareness. Awareness. That's returning us to wholeness. That's returning us to a place of wealth and health. You know, the word wealth actually means well-being. When you look up the Greek meaning of it, it means well-being. Healthy, wealthy, authentic. Authentic city where I am free to be who? Me. Say that with me. We're just going to say, I am free to be me. Join me right now. I am free to be me. One more time. I am free to be me. And now we're going to say, I am free. I am free. You know those two most important words, I am, and whatever you put after that, what? So we declare it, we claim it, and we anchor it into that. So pay attention to the words that are in your own dialogue. The words the thoughts, the things, the energy that flows through you. Is it supporting you in living in authentic city? And the people that are in your life, what are they speaking back to you? Are you judging them for what they're saying? We know when we point the finger how many are pointing back at us. So it's every, I believe everything is truly a calling for us in every single moment to be mindful, to be present, to be so connected and grounded in source that living authentically and living in an authentic city becomes what? Like my breath. It's always with me. It is all that I am. Living authentically opens a door to freedom, as I said a moment ago, a place and a space in which you, being you, is effortless, natural. You simply are. You don't have to do anything. You are already so beautiful, so amazing, so magnificent and so perfect that that authentic expression flows from you in those moments when you just breathe and allow love and light to flow through you. And that energy that moment of you creating that experience, it goes around the world. And your being authentic gives other people permission to do the same. I won't quote the Marianne Williamson quote, because you all already know that one. But who are you not to be amazing? Who are you not to be magnificent? That is your birthright. Take a look at those stories. Take a look at the stuff that you're writing, even now in this moment. Perhaps it's time to close a chapter on a particular book. Maybe it's become an endless novel that you're still writing. Begin a new one. Begin a new one. Viktor Frankl has this wonderful quote, and I really want you to listen to this. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Between stimulus what? and response, there's a space. There's a place. Just like in music, the space between the notes. When you are living authentically, you are so on it when it comes to being so present with the space between the notes, with the space between the breath, with the space between the thoughts. And you live life in this place of ecstasy. 
It is so much fun. How many of you really know a moment when you have been so authentic and so real and it just felt awesome? How many of you can really know that? I'd say maybe half of you. And for those of you who haven't felt that or experienced that, I'm really going to invite you to use the power of your imagination and allow yourself to create authentic city in your mind and in your heart and truly use that power of visualization with an emotion so that you can tap into that exquisite divine place in space. It is truly healing. It is transformation. Authentic living empowers you to live mindfully in the now. Your authentic self who and what you have always been. Love. That's why living in authenticity, living in authentic city, it's like, welcome home. Welcome home. Deepak Chopra has this beautiful little passage here. You are the luminous mystery in which the entire universe with its forms and phenomena arises and subsides. When this realization dawns, there is a complete transformation of your personal self into your universal self. S-E-L-F with capital letters, your higher self. The complete loss of all fear, including death, is in this place. You have this awareness. You have become a being who radiates love the same way the sun radiates light. You have finally arrived at the place from which your journey began. Returning home. Remembering. Recognizing. When you're driving down the road of your life, remember on the road again, we talked about that a few weeks ago, that you start seeing the signs. Authenticity. 100 miles. Authentic city. 50 miles. Oh my gosh, I'm getting closer to my home. This song that this lives in this window. I'm getting closer to my home. The band, don't, don't, no singing here. But all of a sudden it's like, I am. And there's an excitement. Because I recognize it. And it remembers me. And I remember it. And in this place I get to play. All the time. Every time. That's what I came here for. That's the story. It's a story of joy. And jubilation. Of excitement and fun. And honestly, here, I'll be authentic here with you here. Um, not that I haven't been being that while I've been talking. But that truly has been a struggle for me my whole life. How can I let you see me? How can I have an intimate connection with you? Even in a spiritual relationship. You know, intimacy. Into me see. How can I allow you to do that? Because you may notice all the things that I'm so afraid of for you to see. All the imperfections, all the flaws. How do I do that? And to me, we do it just like anything else. One breath at a time. One step at a time. And it doesn't mean we're not going to engage fear. Or that fear's not going to what show up right here. But it means that we're going to have the courage and the desire and the energy that is always available to take that next step. As you learn to live by heart, this is by Martha Beck, for those of you who are not familiar with her. As you learn to live by heart, which to me, authenticity is living from the heart. It's, it's authenticity and action is coming from that heart space. As you learn to live by heart, every choice you make will become another way of telling your story calling your tribe, and liberating not only your heart, but the hearts of others. That's what I said earlier. To be that example. To be that expression. You know, we can tell somebody all day long what it is they need to do and how they need to change their life. We know exactly how to point that finger and, and fix everybody else. But when we stop for a minute, it's reflecting back to us perhaps the things that we need to take a look at. And in that moment, we can just take a breath, stand still, and go, okay, here I am, 
telling you what you need to do. But when I do that for me, then I can share that and become that energy with you. Liberating not only your heart, but the hearts of others. And then we can join hands in our oneness. And we can walk this journey together in celebration. And transformation. And transcend sometimes as human experience. I want to live up here, folks. I don't know about you all. And I'm, I'm okay with this human journey sometimes, but sometimes I'm not okay with it. I'm really not. But then I go, Jeannie, why are you here? Even when I say, you know, I'm not okay being here, what have I done? I've already started another story. What if I said, I'm really okay being here and allowed myself to know something different? This is the very definition of love, authenticity. The process that makes all two human people and societies capable of true humanity. It will chart you a life's journey as unique and authentic as your fingerprint. Send you out full of hope and breathtaking exhilaration onto paths you never thought you could travel. Doesn't that sound exciting and fun on this journey? Look at, look at what's happening here at One World. This new, new journey that we embarked on coming to a new place, a new space. The opportunity to expand and grow individually, as community, collectively, to raise that consciousness, to talk about what's happening in the mission statement globally, a place for peace and love and joy, and to expand that beyond these walls, and to grow that, not just in our minds, because those thoughts can get in our way, but to grow that in the garden of our hearts, and to nourish it, and watch it flourish. Breathtaking exhilaration on the path you never thought you could travel. It is the way you were meant to exist, to be, to thrive. If you stop to listen, you'll realize that your heart has been telling you so all along. Cindy Lou just keep popping in my mind. Of course, she's sitting here right in front of me, but even if she weren't, because I remember the first time I met her and I experienced her energy, I thought this was the most authentic and heart-centered person I had ever connected with. And it was like, oh my God. Amen. Absolutely. And so what she does, she is truly a living example of that Christ light, of that divine light, of the Buddha light. The Kuan Yin light. I don't care what you call it. It's awesome. It's the one light. It's truly the one light. Just take a breath. And breathe that in. You so are amazing. Every single one of you. I just want to offer a few things before I close my talk from Brene Brown and her book. And she says, let's look at the anatomy of authenticity. What are the parts that come together to create an authentic self? Maybe we don't have a clue. How do I be authentic? I don't even know who that guy am. What's my name? Choosing authenticity means, one, cultivating the courage to be imperfect, to set boundaries, and to allow ourselves to be vulnerable. That's scary. Amen. Nurturing the connection and sense of belonging. Do you hear that word connection? Remember what we talked before? Stories, identities, connecting. Nurturing the connection and the sense of belonging. That can only happen when we believe that we are enough. Authenticity is the daily practice of letting go of who we think we're supposed to be and embracing who we are. If you don't know who you are or what you are, why you're here, I really do invite you just to spend some time doing things that allow you to feel connected. And it's different for everybody. It's different for everybody. Listening to music, that's one of my ways. Being with our dogs, Cheryl and I have, that's another one of my ways. Being out in nature. Being with my Tibetan bowl, my collection keeps growing, we keep getting more bowls, and I have my Chow Gong now that I play with the Sacred Sound Meditation. What are the ways for you that allow you to connect with that energy? Authenticity demands wholehearted living and loving, even when it's hard, even when we're wrestling with the shame and fear of not being good enough. 
And especially when the joy, listen to this, especially when the joy is so intense that we're afraid to let ourselves feel it. Have you ever heard that one before? You ever felt that way? It's so good, I'm afraid to touch it. It's so wonderful because you know what? It's going to go away. It's going to be transient. The journey, that's what it is. It's allowing ourselves to be in that flow, in that wave of all that is, knowing, as we've been saying all morning, that we are never alone. We can ride this wave together in authentic city. We need one of those slides, you know, those water slides, like at the water park. Wouldn't it be great? We could call it authentic water slide city or something. And, and learn how to move with that energy of life. To ride that wave and know that God has you in every single moment. And that you will be carried back to the ocean of oneness every single time. No exception. No exception. E.E. E. Cummings wrote, To be nobody but yourself in a world which is doing its best, night and day, to make you everybody but yourself, means to fight the hardest battle that human beings can fight and never stop fighting. I would change that word, honestly, fighting, because even with cancer, I know when I went through breast cancer in 02, and, and when I worked for the cancer organization, there was always this battle, I've got to fight it, I've got to beat it. And I'm not saying that those are words that, that are not okay to use, because I want you to be true to you, but what I'm saying is pay attention to the words that you are using. Because for me, fighting means exhaustion. It means that I'm pushing all the time rather than allowing myself to experience something different and to be very cognizant of how I'm working with the energy. Fear, energy is in there. Everything is energy. So it really calls us to be stewards of how we are using our energy. Courage is telling our story, being who and what we are, not being immune to criticism. Oh, there's a criticism word. Goodness. Being vulnerable is a risk we have to take if we want to experience connection. Living authentically can feel daunting at times, no doubt. And there is risk involved in putting your true self out in the world. Some common struggles that Brene Brown found when she was doing some research, there were four that the research participants found of the study of authenticity and shame. Okay, this is what you're supposed to do, right? Don't make people feel uncomfortable, but be honest. Okay, that's one. Don't upset anyone or hurt anyone's feelings, but say what's on your mind. All right? Sound informed and educated, but not like a know-it-all. Don't say anything unpopular or controversial, but have the courage to disagree with the crowd. All righty then. I think we need classes on authenticity so we can learn to grow those muscles and do some authenticity Pilates or something and, and connect with our core. Truly, no kidding, no joking. Being real means stepping out of your comfort zone and playing it unsafe. Unsafe. And knowing again, like I said, you're never alone. So you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. She says, I believe there's a greater risk in hiding yourself and your gifts from the world. Our unexpressed ideas, opinions, and contributions don't go away, and they can easily eat away at our worthiness. Sacrificing who we are for the sake of what other people think just is not worth it. I love this last thing, and I, and I will just throw it out there to you, and you know, probably laughing with me, I hope not, I really like bummed out here. But anyway, she says, we should be born with a warning label, similar to the ones that come on cigarette packages, like, caution, if you trade in your authenticity for safety, you may experience the following, anxiety, depression, eating disorders, addiction, rage, blame, resentment, and inexplicable grief. Powerful words. Are you trading in your authenticity for something that I know the core of you knows is not what you are called to experience. Three suggestions to be authentic when you're feeling vulnerable. So write these down in your mind. You've got a little note thing if you notice this week in your bulletin. They've done a wonderful job of having a little piece of paper to write some notes on. Three suggestions. Number one, get deliberate. 
You've heard of attentions, but you also have deliberate intentions. Get deliberate with your intentions. Say to yourself, don't shrink. Don't puff up. Stand on your sacred ground. Don't play small. And don't put on your armor to protect you. There's no need. I do that a lot. I'm still doing that. This chiropractor that I go to, the and I see, he's not even a chiropractor. He's a gift from some other dimension. And he keeps talking to me about this shield, this gladiator heart that I have, and, I, and I'm learning how to pull that shield away. Because, yeah, we've been hurt, and stuff happens and all that, but, whew, man, we're all a work in progress. And thank you, God, for reminding myself of that. So you don't need to put on your armor to protect you. You're already protected. You're safe. Number two, get inspired. Who inspires you? Be brave with your life. And when you had the song, I thought, yes. Be brave with your life so others can be brave with theirs. And number three, get going. Keep authenticity your goal, your priority. Not acceptance or approval, which is often what we go for. When, they're going in, when going into a situation when you're feeling vulnerable. Maybe you should create an app for authenticity and put it on your phone. All you computer folks out here, maybe you could do that and then you could have an authenticity app and we could learn how to live in that place more often. Appreciate all that you are. Awaken to your higher self in this place of authentic city. And when you're done, I want you to invite all of us over so we can see the city, the beautiful city in which you live. You are truly amazing, and I truly hope that you will be true to you in every expression that you are, because you're totally awesome. Thank you so much.